while the midpoint of the show takes us back to where it all began and reminds us how far we have come. Hey guys, Hammer of the Mid-Season Finale of the Vampire Diaries, Season 8, Episode 7. The next time I heard somebody, it could be you. And guys, this is it. We are now down to the crunch time. This is the final mid-season finale we will ever have with the show, and... I was definitely interested in this episode, to say the least. Like I said, I am kind of getting annoyed because I think the show is getting really repetitive, and I don't really know why we're doing 16 episodes. I think they would have benefited a lot more from 13 episodes. Example, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Look at where they are with 7 episodes, and now look at where the Vampire Diaries are, which that will be my next review. We'll get into that later, but... Either way, I really do not know how this episode is going to be, but I gotta say this was overall a really satisfying mid-season finale. I think it definitely set up where the rest of the show is going to go, and I really did like that. Was it perfect? No, but I definitely really enjoyed this episode overall, but let's just get right into it. We actually start off in Monterey in 1917, where Christmas music is playing in the background, and two young children are pretending to sleep when they believe they hear Santa, and this episode, luckily, was a lot more Christmassy than last year's. Last year's episode just wasn't really Christmassy at all. It was kind of just a Christmas episode, but it was kind of just like Christmas was in it, but they peer out of the tent, and they see Stefan ripping people's throats out, and we're reminded that Stefan is, in fact, a ripper, and... I've always been interested in the storyline. I like that Stefan's a ripper. I like that we got back into that here because, yeah, Stefan was a ripper, and we talk about how powerful he really is. But back in the day, back to present day, we see Stefan is writing in the journal for Elena. He tells us his last entry. He says that for Christmas, he's giving himself a present today. He continues to explain that in order to get the twins back, he made a deal with the devil. And at midnight, he has to leave his life behind, even though he just pledged it to Caroline forever. He begs Elena to remind Caroline if he doesn't make it back to her, he did everything that he could, and... It's a really nice moment because, yeah, you don't really know if he's going to get back there. And like I said, I really don't think that this wedding is really going to take place. But she wakes up and is surprised that Stefan's busy cooking in the kitchen. He says that this is going to be their last day together. And he wants it to be a normal day like normal people. So Alaric arrives with the twins. And it's a nice moment between those two. But Alaric then arrives with Lizzie and Josie. But tells Caroline that they can't stay long. And they're constantly in this episode asking for Celine. You know, they want to know if Celine's going to come to dinner. They want to know if Celine is there. Like, they are now obsessed with Celine, and Alaric asks if she has spoken to Matt before she can answer the twins. Uh, they ask if Celine is coming, and Stebbin scoops him up in his arms and tells him that he has presents for them, leaving Caroline to talk to Alaric, and Caroline's upset that the girls are asking for Celine, that they need to know she is not a safe person, because obviously she's not. You know, this is not someone that is an ally. This is someone who wants to destroy them, and Caroline asks Alaric what else has happened, that they cannot stay for dinner, and just as Alaric tells Caroline to sit down so they can talk, the front door opens and there is Damon and Sybil and obviously Alaric is shocked because he killed him but Caroline's surprised when Damon continues telling her that Alaric and Matt killed him and even buried him but Christmas just got married and we knew that obviously Damon can't die it's kind of I, I'm kind of pissed that Damon became immortal but I like seeing Damon on the show I think Ian Salmer also agrees a character that I'm fine with seeing him still here but it is kind of annoying that Damon can't die but I'm pretty sure that he is gonna die probably before the show is over so, Bonnie and Enzo are enjoying the morning, where after Bonnie owns a silly gift, he tells that he's taking her to Paris, and they're kind of separated from everything else that's going on, which I really do like at this point. I like that these two seem to be having a somewhat normal life, and she squeals and hugs him, he tells her to say the word, and they're off. She giggles, and her phone begins to ring, and they're really cute, I'd say. I think they're doing a really good job of selling Bonnie and Enzo, which I, I really do believe these two are in love, and they do that really well. Definitely more so than Caroline and, and Stefan. I think they have good chemistry, don't get me wrong, but they're just a lot more boring, and I think Bonnie and Enzo are just a lot more interesting, but Bonnie and Enzo apologize that they are late. Caroline tells him not to come, that Damon is there with the psycho American Idol reject, and Enzo cannot be around her, and Caroline tells her not to get started on what Matt and Alaric did, but Bonnie and Enzo are thinking about finding the tuning fork, and Caroline says that she will work on it, because obviously you know the tuning fork will subdue them, and... She shares drinks with Damon and Sybil, and Seven comes down and says Alaric is going to stay with the girls for a while, and Damon says there's no need to hide the girls since he is honoring their deal with Cade, and Sybil even has the nerve to ask for a thank you for training the twins for the brothers, which, yeah, it's kind of a good thing what she did, but at the same time, I mean, you're taking Stefan away from Caroline. It's not exactly the most ideal situation, but Caroline does say thank you that, you know, she cannot fault one sibling for the faults of another, and Damon asks Stefan to come with him to get the old family ornaments and the second that he did that you knew that there was definitely going to be more to this that he wasn't going to take him there and Stefan asked Damon to leave him alone 
Since after midnight, Dame will have him for eternity. Damon says that when Alara killed him, it will give him a chance to spend time with Cade. He admits that Cade is an interesting guy, and Damon asks Stefan if he wants to spend some time with him. Stefan says no, he really wants nothing to do with him, he just wants to have a normal Christmas, but Damon stabs him anyway, saying Cade said the opposite about him, and he wakes up believing that he is in his house with all the Christmas stuff up, and he calls for Caroline, but Cade actually appears instead, and Cade explains that he's just on the other side of the veil, and I gotta say, I don't know who plays Cade, but he's really really good at what he does like I really am into, I liking this character I think he's a badass overall and you definitely you know believe that he is the devil like if I had to think of the devil Cade would definitely be you know the devil like he did a really good job playing this character and I was worried definitely but so far I'm really liking what I'm seeing of Cade I think he's really good um as his character but either way uh we see you know uh he, Damon as uh, we see uh Cade explains that he's just on the other side of the veil Cade says he just wanted to discuss their new partnership, and, me and, and basically that's where the rest of the episode is. It's these two trying to discuss, you know, exactly what this is going to entail, but Caroline's pl uh, applying Sybil with tons of alcohol in hopes of her revealing where the tuning fork is, because if she gets her drunk, then she'll be able to get into Sybil's mind, and I thought this was really smart of her all the way she's going to do that, but she's struggling to cut the turkey. Sybil takes over first, asking about her ring and the wedding they were supposed to have, and Sybil tells Caroline that Stem will be a great for Kate with Kate and probably will be able to kill like 12 people in 10 seconds. And Sybil tells Caroline where she's staying, where there is huge mansions and she can entice the men with just a little song. And I like the way these two are kind of going back and forth and which man, you know, who's really better for Stefan. And Sybil does bring up a good point that Stefan can really kill anyone. I mean, he is a ripper. He knows how to kill really well and she can use him for that. And I think we're really reminded of why, you know, Stefan is as powerful as he is and why they really need him as much as they need Damon. So Caroline tells Bonnie where Sybil's staying, then she says she needs another gift box, and as she hangs up with Bonnie, she sees Stefan Gray and dead on the floor. Now obviously he's not dead, but Damon comes in and tells her to relax because he isn't dead, and if it were a lark holding up dinner, Caroline tries to attack Damon, but he grabs her by the throat instead. He explains that Kate requested the meeting with Stefan, and Damon then gives her the star. He stabs Stefan when suggests that if she washes it off, it may still work, and a lark is upstairs with the twins when he's done reading the book. They want him to read more. He says they need a nap in order for Sam to come, and the girls and say that Uncle Stefan told them that their palace is the safest place in the whole world, and he told them not to open palaces doors for anyone except for him, you know, Caroline and Stefan, you know, they can only open doors for him, and they talk about Celine, but of course, you know, he knows that Celine is not good, and I think this is a very interesting storyline, the fact that they keep wanting to have Celine there, but... Sybil's hanging the ornaments on the tree. Caroline admits she hates them, and Matt and his dad then walk in. Caroline is happy to see them, but Damon confronts Matt's father. Sybil tells him that they have been waiting for him. Caroline says that Damon's alive, but uh, body ends over late, and Stefan's dead. Merry Christmas. She says she has gifts. So, needless to say, I mean, this is a completely normal Christmas for her because she's used to this kind of thing. But at the same time, I mean, this is not all going in the way that she wanted to. So, Kay brings Seven back to the scene in 1917, tells him if death is his canvas, this is his masterpiece, nothing but evil could produce this. And Seven doesn't care that he's evil, reminded that he is, in fact, the Ripper. But he swears that he would never do such a thing on Christmas. This is just not who he is. But, of course, that's not Stefan. That, of course, is the Ripper in him and... You know, he really is torturing Stefan, showing him what he's capable of. And back in the mansion, Caroline's hanging out Christmas gifts, even to Sybil and Damon. And Damon stands up, says they are probably wondering why he's there tonight. He announced that he has a gift too. For one person, he's going to send straight to hell, then cheers, and says, let's eat. So basically, he's there to kill someone else. We don't know who it's going to be, but someone's going to be sent to Earth. And uh, Enzo and Bonnie are outside of, out of the mansion where he's sure she's staying. Enzo cannot enter because the owner's still alive. And Bonnie walks into the house, and Celine says she knows that she's there ask the owners to invite in their other guests and Celine lets them in and I like that Celine actually seems to be kind of on their side like she doesn't seem to be as bad as we think and uh, she says that they're going to leave without the weapon. Celine orders Bonnie to hand over her phone. And out the Salvatore mentioned, Damon's becoming very impatient. Caroline tells him he's not going to kill Lark or anyone else. They're going to sit there and enjoy dinner just like Stefan wanted. And, you know, she's doing what she can to keep things under control and try to keep it as normal as possible. But Damon uses his blade to stab into the bread. Everyone's a little bit jumpy. Sybil says that Damon's just doing his job. Matt's dad, Peter, asks him if his job is to kill innocent people. And when Damon suggests that Matt killed his girlfriend, Matt gets angry tells me never murder anyone and Caroline tells Matt to sit down which we know is kind of true that Matt did in fact kill Penny that it wasn't really Dame that did it was in fact Matt and 
Damon says that at least Rick torn up when he stabs him the other night. He then admits that yes, he would like to kill Alaric, but that is personal. The person he's going to kill is on principle, and it's sad to see Damon want to kill Alaric when we know the bond that these two used to have. It's definitely sad to see overall, but again, this is what Damon's become. Sybil's gotten into his mind. You know, she's essentially taken his heart from him, and this is basically what Damon's become, and there's really nothing he can do to avoid that. So the person he's going to kill is on principle. Caroline cuts him off by telling him that this is all personal. Sybil asks about Peter, and Matt jumps up, tells her to back off. Celine then calls Alaric from Bonnie's phone, and Celine says that his children need her help, that she needs to fix what she started, and she misses she needs to remove the psychic imprint she left in them, because obviously it's making them obsessed with her. And Alaric tells uh, her to give Bonnie and Enzo what they came for, and to drop dead, he hangs up the phone, and she sits back down and continues on with her list of names. Bonnie asks her what the list is, and she says that it's all the people that she killed, and Enzo asked her where she picked up that habit, she says back in Monterey, where Steven and Cade are right now, and we then see that Steven sees Celine actually as an adult in the woods, and Cade continues the journey with Steven, asking if any of it jogs his memory, Celine asks him who they are, as Steven is etching the names of all his victims in the wall, and we realize that these two actually have known each other in a past life, which I don't think we knew that before, but Steven has known Celine before, and Steven tells her to leave, or she will go up there next, and she tells him he's too exhausted to hurt her, she begins to sing to him and tells her to tells him to rest now. Her master has claimed his soul. And Celine tells Bonnie the whole story too. Enzo asks Celine why she spared Stefan. She says when she looked into his mind, she didn't see evil, that she only saw anguish, that he wasn't okay with what he was doing. Like she knew deep down this is not who he really was. And she Stefan begins to beg Celine to kill him, but she says all she saw was a man who was innocent and loved, but had to become a monster to survive. Celine says it was a story she knew too well and didn't want to make the decision. And Cade tells Stefan that Celine altered his memory, so she he forgot that moment and made his best servant almost feel remorse, and Cade says he wants Stefan and is glad to finally hear that he finally owns the Ripper as well as a servant, and Cade tells him they have one more stop, and Celine tells Bonnie and Enzo that all she wanted was to be free, but now when she dies, Cade will torture her soul in hell because her sister sold her out, and redemption is the only chance that she has, and... She then takes to the tuning fork, and as Enzo takes her, she begs for Lark to bring her his daughters and to come see her, and Enzo promises to relay the message, and Bonnie thanks her, and I like that right now, he does seem to be complying, because, you know, Celine, like I said, it seems like she genuinely is sincere when she says that she just wants to, you know, get them there, but Damon's asking Peter the worst thing he's ever done when Lark joins them, says his only regret was not making sure that Damon was permanently dead, and Damon taunts him about Deed, saying he bailed on his family, Peter says that he was just a kid kid, and Damon says unless his last name is Pan, he hasn't been a kid for a very long time, so explain to him what he has done during the last 20 years, and... Caroline tells Peter he doesn't have to answer. This was actually genuinely a very intense scene. Like, you could tell that Peter really didn't want to say this, but Damon forced him to. And he tells Peter to tell everyone what has kept him away the past 20 years. And Peter missed that Kelly was pregnant again, and he couldn't just be a toilet scrubber in this town. He had to leave and get out. And Damon says it's worse than he thought. Peter had no reason at all, really. And Damon announces that they have a winner. Matt doesn't even stand up to defend his father because he can't even look him in the eye. He can't believe that they just left, and that's why they ended up where they did. So he can't believe believe that what ended up happening and that that's what basically got them to Mystic Falls that it was essentially because of that but Cade then brings Stefan to school where it was moments before he met Elena and Stefan says that this is where he was good and he loved her and this is a big moment you know this is everything that you know, has been leading, I, I think everything, you know, that we've, you know, everything that started this, you know, really, that was the moment where Stefan became who he is today, and Kate tells him that she has already suffered enough tragedy, that he took a good girl who was headed down the right path, and he veered her right into the median, and that's very much true, you know, we know what Elena went through, she saw her parents die in a car crash, like, we know exactly what she went through, and Seven says that that was never his intention, saying he tried to protect her, and Kate continues to tell him never meeting her would have been protecting her, but instead, he chose a total stranger to turned her into something dark, and Seven says he can't take that back, and Cade says he'd do it again, take people who are close to getting into the pearly gates by an inch, and make them into folks who will miss it by a mile, like Elena. He wants him to help gather them, and Seven asks Cade that he thought he was looking for evil people, but Cade tells him that he's looking for good people who can be made wicked, and that's exactly what he wants to do Stefan. He wants to break him, and they are evil at their core, their souls are usually potent, and those are the ones he wants to feed on the most, and Basically, you know, like I said, he kind of just wants to take people who are essentially good and turn them into someone who's bad, and that's kind of exactly who Stefan is.
So Sybil then helps clean the blood off of Peter's face, and Ming that she actually prefers to catch them with honey. She tells him that she came here to get something, and where is it? Peter tells her whatever she wants. He has no idea what she needs. She then goes into his mind, and as he screams, he tells Matt and Alaric not to go in there. Enzo rushes in, rings the tuning fork, which causes Sybil to drop, but it, so does Bonnie, and Enzo attends to Bonnie, and Sybil vanishes. Stevan and Kate are then back in his living room. Stevan asks what would happen if he refuses, and Kate tells him he can't wait until those kids upstairs become of age. And, of course, he's talking about, you know, the little kids, because eventually they are going to serve to Cade, and Steven says if he doesn't have to be patient, and if Steven turns off his humanity for a short time, then Cade will let him and Damon go. So, it really is kind of a easy situation, a pretty sweet deal overall, but Steven says when he was the Ripper, he is one of a kind and no one could do what he did. Cade him one year, but goes on to tell him that the beast he saw in Monterey will not tire of this work. He bets the year with him, Steven will not want to leave, and I very much agree with that. In fact, I could see a scenario where Steven and Caroline are set to get married, but Steven does not come back because he is in fact the Ripper, and as we know, the Ripper is kind of addicted to killing, so we don't really know what's going to happen there, but Steven says he's wrong. Cade said that is what makes this a great wager. Sybil and Damon then join an intimate moment people are caroling around them he hands Sybil the gift that he got from Caroline and Sybil opens it it's the necklace that Damon found for Elena and it's a pretty big moment because as we know she's been trying to replace herself with Elena and he has a few flashbacks, but he places it around Sybil's neck. He rips her heart out and tears the necklace off her neck, walks away. So I really don't know where Damon's going to go now because it seems that he's going against Sybil. But at the same time, I don't really know. I guess we'll have to see. But Enzo and Byron are driving as Bonnie holds a tuning fork, which they did, in fact, obtain. But Alaric told, tells her that it hurts the twins' ears. Bonnie tells Enzo that her grams taught her all witchcraft is rude and psychic energy. Before she knew she could do magic, she thought that she was psychic. And Bonnie figures that it's gross that she she's connected to the sirens and in fact Cade and she then makes Enzo laugh when she says she bought him t-shirts he's taking her to Paris and all she bought were t-shirts and she says that she sucks and Enzo t t turns to her and says that she's the best gift that he has always wanted it's it's cheesy but it's a nice moment overall I actually really do believe that these two are together and I'm really liking them as a couple so really cute stuff there but Caroline stays by Seven until he wakes up he asks where Damon is she tells him everyone's gone Seven then brings her under the mistletoe kisses her before he tells her what Cade tells him he tells her he loves her and she tells him to stop stalling and basically Steven says that they've made a deal for Steven to serve him for one year and then he's done and Caroline says why would Kate agree that Steven says that what he's going to do makes it worth it for him and Caroline asks him what he's going to do he begs her to let it go for now because in seven minutes Christmas is over and everything changes and he asks her to let him just enjoy this and he doesn't tell her what that's really going to entail even though he knows he doesn't really want her to know and I think it's just because he knows the beast within him and he knows what he's going to do and I don't think he wants her really involved with that, but Alaric's with the girls, agrees to meet with Celine, and she actually does comply. She erases their memories, at least we think she's going to, so we'll have to see if she actually does actually agree with their plan, but we'll have to see. Matt then drives Peter home without a word, and it's really hard for him to look him in the eye. You know, he now knows that Peter's the reason why he came to Mystic Falls, and they exchange looks, and Matt's really heartbroken. He was hoping to get his father out of Mystic Falls, but now it seems like that's not happening, but Caroline's in with the twins. Alaric uh, opens gifts, and Alaric says they need to get going soon. Caroline says she knows, but is cherishing the moment with the girls, because she knows that everything's about to change for the worse, but they are trying to savor the moment, and Steven's been walking down the street. Damon pulls up, tells him to hop in. Steven gets in the car. Damon spins his wheels at a town. He tells Steven to flip that switch so it won't be so painful. He says not yet. They're on the road again, and they need a theme song, and he literally Really turn he does in fact turn off to Manny. Damon says there he is, says Merry Christmas, brother, and that is the way the episode ends. Really good stuff overall. Let me just get into this episode and where I think the rest of the show is gonna go from here. So overall, I thought this was a really strong mid-season finale, honestly. I thought they did a really good job setting up the rest of the show. Let's talk about Stefan, though, because yes, he is, in fact, the Ripper. Like I said, the Ripper is, in fact, addicted to killing, and that's something that definitely does kind of concern me, because now that we know that Stefan is going to serve Decade for one year, he has his humanity off. The Ripper within him will try to stay, and we don't know, is he going to win, or is the Ripper going to win? I think the Ripper is going to win over Stefan. I don't really know. I definitely think now the wedding is definitely not not going to happen. I mean, I thought it since the second they got together, but I definitely think that wedding is not going to happen, and the fact that he's leaving Caroline out of it definitely makes me think that, so I don't really know where that's going to go. What is Damon's overall plan? I mean, it's at one point, it seems like he's going to be with Sybil, then he rips her heart out the next moment. I really don't know where we were headed with Damon. We have, I think, like... 
I want to say, I don't know, 10, 12 episodes left. So I don't know where Damon's going to go within those 10 to 12 episodes, but that's going to be very interesting uh, because, you know, with him without Celine, they've been such a big part of the season. She's manipulated him. Now it seems like he's abandoning her. So I really don't know where we're going to go with that. That's going to be interesting. I like this direction with Matt. I like that Matt now knows that Peter is the one that got him to Mystic Falls and that, you know, Peter's the reason for basically all the shit that's gone down with him. And it's definitely going to change the dynamic between those two. I think it's sad what Peter did you understand why he had to do it because they really didn't have any else anywhere else to go but it was very sad to see I definitely do feel bad for Peter you know he never really wanted to tell this but you know Damon forced him to tell his darkest secret and he did in fact come out and it's it's probably the worst time that something like this could have come out so I really did feel bad for Matt in that situation and very sad to hear that no one should ever have to go through something like that and that definitely was very sad to see I love Bonnie and Enzo I really gotta say I love where they're going I think they're very cute together and I hopefully they'll be able to stay somewhat normal you know in this show whenever couples happy they don't stay happy but i'm hoping that bonnie and enzo by the end of the show are genuinely happy i like the direction we're going with them right now but hearing Bonnie's connected to Cade and Celine and Sybil definitely makes me think that there's going to be some sort of connection coming very, very soon. I don't know what, but I think Bonnie is going to get her powers back. I think we're definitely going to see something like that take place. And I think she's going to play a big part into the main narrative of the season pretty soon. But, you know, she's kind of been away from it. But again, we'll have to see. I don't really know where that's going to go. And then I guess the only other question is... Is, Sibyl, is Celine really going to comply to what Alaric wants her to do? Yes, it seems like she is going to, but at the same time, we don't really know if we can trust her, so we'll have to see where that's going to go, and I don't really know what's going to happen there. But overall, guys, I've enjoyed this season so far. I think this has been a, overall a well-done final season. It's been a little bit repetitive, but definitely better than last season. Let me know what you guys thought of this season so far. I loved your thoughts on it. Have you enjoyed uh, the, you know, did you enjoy this episode? Do you like where the show's going? Where do you think we're really headed with Damon and Stefan? Because I really don't know. But that's it for this video. Hope you are enjoying We'll see you guys in the next which will be for the first half of the season of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which I can't wait to finally review. I can't wait to talk about that show, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.